Convair's XB46 prototype has been described as one of the most beautiful looking jets of its time. It had a sleek, straight wing design and an innovative pneumatic control system. The jet also had a weapons load capacity of up to 22,000 pounds. The XB46 prototype for a jet powered bomber was a powerful sight to behold. The Needle, as its test pilots nicknamed it, was initially designed to counter the German Arado AR-234, the world's first operational jet-powered bomber. But neither luck nor history was ever on this Convair's prototype's side. The bomber never saw production or active duty. The Needle never moved on from the testing stage, as it was largely overshadowed by what later became one of the most popular bombers of the mid-century, Boeing Stratajet. Though short, its legacy still lives on, and its design served as an example for other bombers of the post-war era. As budgets shifted, a new priority emerged in its place, one of Convair's most bizarre creations, the forward wing swept XB-53. The Class of 45 As the German strength diminished in the later stages of World War II, innovation in combat aircraft was one of their final attempts at achieving air superiority. This led to the development of the Arado AR-234 Blitz. It was the world's first operational jet-powered bomber and the last Luftwaffe aircraft to fly over England during the Second World War. First introduced in September of 1944, the Blitz was so fast it could outfly most ground-based defenses and airborne interceptors. It was nearly impossible to intercept and excelled in covert reconnaissance missions before being converted to a light bomber role. The US Department of War was aware of the damage this German technology could inflict on their bases. It was almost mythical when it first appeared. Few in Europe had heard or seen turbojet engines. Allied group intelligence documents warned of their existence, but Allied sightings were few and far between, even though over 200 of the Blitzes had been built. It's no wonder. The AR-234 was one of the fastest planes of the war, reaching 540 miles per hour. The Americans were thus determined to make their own American version of a jet-powered bomber to compete. It would pack a far bigger punch than its German counterpart, which could carry only 3,300 pounds of bombs on external racks. That same year the AR-234 was introduced, the War Department issued a new request for a medium bomber design. Boeing, Convair, Martin, and North American Aviation were the most notable responses to the initiative from the U.S. Army Air Forces for a high-flying jet-powered bomber capable of a thousand-mile range and having a large payload. This competing group of designs came to be known as the Class of 45. Other designs from this competition included the North American XB-45, the Martin XB-48, and what eventually became the American strategic bomber of choice, the Boeing B-47 Stratajet. With World War II still wreaking havoc all over Europe and the Pacific, a mock-up of the Convair proposal, the XB-46, was approved at the beginning of 1945. A contract for three other prototypes was granted in the following months. The XB-46 was a simple but elegant design. Even in the years after its eventual cancellation, it's considered one of the most beautiful jets of its era. It was a straight-wing configuration, equipped with Fowler flaps that extended over 90% of the span in four different sections. Each wing had five spoilers made of magnesium. The fuselage had a sleek and aerodynamic design, which helped improve the speed of the jet. The bomber carried a crew of three. The pilot and co-pilot were seated together under a canopy, with great vision out of the cockpit. The nose section held the bombardier behind a plexiglass nose cone. The XB-46 had the first ever all-pneumatic aircraft. The new system would operate the bomb bay doors, the brakes, and the landing gear. The jet was praised for this system, which saved considerable weight and allowed a faster activation than more common hydraulic or electrical control systems. The J-35 engines installed in the prototype would later be exchanged for the improved General Electric J-47 engines. In battle, the aircraft would be able to carry a warload of up to 22,000 pounds. There were also plans to introduce a twin gun at the tail with 50 caliber heavy machine guns. Unfortunately, for numerous reasons, the XB-46 never moved past the prototype stage. By the time it entered the testing stage, World War II was over. The race for air superiority against the Germans was no longer a priority for the U.S. Army Air Force. This resulted in the cancellation of several projects due to budget cuts. This shift in budgeting priorities severely affected Convair. At the beginning of 1945, the United States Army Air Force was interested in two of their proposals the XB-46 bomber jet, and the XA-44 CO attack jet. But there was an insufficient budget to fund both of the projects, and company officials had to decide which one was more important. Some argued that the XA-44 CO's unusual forward wing design was too risky. 
there was already a lot of competition for the jet-powered bomber project in which the needle was competing. In June 1946, the USAAF agreed to fund the XB-46. The prototype made its maiden flight on April 2nd, 1947, at the hands of pilots Sam Shannon and Bill Martin. It was quickly nicknamed the Needle. The initial test results were mostly positive. Convair and Army Air Force pilots praised the bomber for its handling qualities. The Needle reached a maximum speed of 450 miles per hour, with a cruising speed near 440 miles per hour, a range up to 2,870 miles, and a surface ceiling of up to 40,000 feet. Although its stability and control exceeded expectations during its test flights, it still needed improvements. An unlikely contender. When tensions between the U.S. and the USSR arose, the beginning of the Cold War prompted the U.S. Army Air Force to continue the pursuit of an operational jet-powered bomber as soon as humanly possible. Therefore, they decided to skip the competition ordinarily held between the admitted proposals. An examination was made of the designs already available to find out which one could be built faster. The only ones near completion were Convair's XP-46 and the North American Aviation B-45 Tornado. The U.S. Army Air Force needed to pick one of them for immediate production soon. Other proposals, such as Boeing's XP-47 and Martin's XP-48, were still years behind in development. The Army Air Forces delayed their consideration for them until after they were flown. Still, there remained a slight possibility of production for these delayed prototypes. If one of these designs happened to be superior to the Convair or North American Aviation prototypes, they would re-enter consideration. Boeing would later pounce, but for a time, it was between Convair and North American. And according to the U.S. Army Air Force's conclusions, the performance of Convair's needle was inferior to North American's B-45 for several reasons. The needle was larger, yet its small fuselage wouldn't be able to hold all the required radar equipment needed for a bomber. Its sleek, classy design was ultimately its demise. North American's B-45 Tornado's configuration was quite similar to other aircraft of the era, presenting fewer risks. And so, on August 2nd, 1946, the USAAF officially announced the production of the Tornado, and every chance the needle had at being produced disappeared. Still, the Army Air Force didn't end up building very many B-45s at all. When the Boeing B-47 finally took its first flight on December 17th, 1947, it proved to be the best of all proposals, and plans changed once again. Better known as the Stratajet, the Boeing B-47 eventually became one of the Air Force's signature jets for many years, with over 2,000 airframes being built. The Stratajet design was extremely adaptable. It was modified to perform numerous other roles and functions, aside from the bomber role. It flew photographic reconnaissance, electronic intelligence, and even weather forecasting missions. Although it was never actually used as a bomber in a mission, the Stratajet remained in service as a reconnaissance jet until 1969, becoming one of the Air Force's most legendary planes. Lost in time. The Convair XB-46 program was officially cancelled in August 1947. It had become outdated even before the testing was completed. Overall, the single XB-46 prototype made 64 flights and spent over 100 hours in the air. The rapid pace of aeronautical progress and the changing times quickly rendered it obsolete, as often happened in the post-war era. Even the USAAF rebranded itself in 1947, becoming what is now the United States Air Force. In July 1950, after sitting in a warehouse for a year, the needle was flown one last time to Eglin Air Force Base. Its acclaimed pneumatic system was tested in the sizable climatic facility under the most extreme weather conditions. The XB-46's development helped improve the art of designing and flying large aircraft. Sadly, it's not possible to find it displayed in an aviation museum. The only needle to ever exist did not survive as a whole. On January 13, 1951, the nose section alone was sent to the U.S. Air Force Museum at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The rest of the needle was scrapped in February 1952. Today, the needle's legacy only lives through photographs, videos, and official Air Force records. Although the needle was a decent design concept that flew relatively well and was loved by its test pilots, the XB-46 was eclipsed by a better, more adaptable airplane. The program that Convair would instead focus its efforts on, the XA-44, ultimately fared even worse. Eventually renamed the XB-53, it had radically forward-swept wings at an angle of 30 degrees. On paper, it could reach speeds of 580 miles per hour while carrying 40 rockets and 12,000 pounds of bombs. But paper was as far as the design would get. Two prototypes were ordered, but neither were ever built. <laughs>